Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Abundant Life Mastery Mentor Series. My name is Candice. Welcome back. I am so excited for today, and I've been so excited about all the speakers that we have had on the series up until this point. So for any of you have, who have been so curious as to the energy that has been existing in the world right now, if you've had a calling on your heart and you're not sure what that calling is, you feel activated, you feel embodied with the energy that is of the world right now, and you're ready to generously give, you're ready to learn more about ascension, you're ready to learn more about abundance and 5D, you have come to the right place. And today's speaker is none other than David Ash, an Ascension physicist. He is a wealth of knowledge. My pre-interview with David was so captivating. I wanted to talk to him for hours. And he breaks down um, soul activation and soul ascension in such a way that you can completely understand it on a, on a scientific level. And David's also prepared something special for us today. David? Yes, I've got a song. This The uh, theme of today's talk is Times of Change, which is the title of the song I'm going to sing at the end of this interview. And uh, my background is that I'm a, I'm a physicist, also a nutritionist and a singer songwriter so i but very much my physics is is all to do with integrating science with the spiritual at the age of four i declared i was going to prove the existence of god through science and then what happened at the age of 16 i discovered an ancient yogic philosophy that the smallest particles of matter are whirlpools of energy whirlpools of light so we're formed out of light because the the subatomic particles these little corpuscles they're not they're not little bits of material, they're, they're whirlpools of light, like balls of wool, they're, they're spherical whirls, whirlpools of light. And the key that Einstein taught us is it's the speed of the energy in the light that is really important. So we're on a plane of reality, a plane of energy in which the speed of the energy is the speed of light, that we got a speed of common light. And the energy is either going in waves, which we see as light, or it's spinning to form particles of matter. Now, have you got that? Great. But there are other levels of energy in the universe, other planes of energy that are based upon faster speeds than the speed of light, okay? And I discovered a way that we can actually move matter from one level to another, okay? So we've got the physical level, and then we've got the hyperphysical, which is the soul level, and we've got the superphysical, which is the spiritual level. And the way to understand the interrelationship of these levels is with the nested Russian dolls. What happens is that the spiritual level, which is the fastest speed, contains the soul level, which is slightly slower. And then finally, we've got the physical level inside it, which is the, the world we're in. So this is the 3D reality, which is contained by the 4D D reality. So we're part of the soul level and which is then contained by the spiritual level. So we're not physical beings with a soul and a spirit. We're spiritual beings with a soul and a body. Do you get it? Yes. So we're here not to have a spiritual experience we're spiritual beings here to have a physical experience which is why it's so important that we're grounded okay gosh i love it yes I get and that it. comes from the physics that's what's so exciting it comes from the physics that the the faster speeds contain the slower speeds so it's like we're down here we're at walking speed and the spirit is at the speed of a jet okay and a, a jet can go at walking speed but we can't get to jet speed Okay. I can definitely feel that when I meditate. <laughs> yeah, except when you meditate, you see. So what it is that we're multidimensional beings. And the other thing I discovered in the physics is that there's no space time separation between the planes, between the worlds. The separation is the intrinsic speed of energy. So in other words, the angels are all around us, but we can't see them because they're moving too fast. And we don't see the fairies at the bottom of the garden because we're too slow and clumsy. The ancients recognized that the separation between us and spirits is a factor of speed. You are... And this is, where, this is why Einstein said the sole universal reality co constant is the speed of light. The most important thing is the speed of the energy. 
because that what that delineates the levels. So what you're saying is our guides, our angels are in front of us. The spirits that are around us are in yep. front of us at all times. I just absolutely them because I'm moving a lot slower. That's it. We, you see, we're part of their reality. They can be us here because we're part of their garden. We're part of their reality. But they're beyond us because we're, in, we, we're formed of a lesser speed of energy, which is then contained by the faster speed and the faster speed. So our world is a subset of theirs. But you, you see, we can't get to them until we accelerate our speed of energy. And that's what the Ascension's about. It's about yes. tuning in. It's about resonance. It's about increasing the speed of our energy so that we can become spirit, so we can become soul, if you see what I mean. I do. I do. And I, David, so my question, so I have two questions. My first question is, so when I meditate, when we meditate, and I can access the messages from my soul and from the, yeah, my yeah. guides. So, so is that something that my, what's going on in my mind that I'm able to then access? Yeah. That okay, let, let me explain that to you. What's happening is you are a spiritual being in a soul, in a body. And so the thing is that when you meditate, when you connect with your, the higher levels of yourself, your higher self is that part of you which is going at 16 times the speed of light, the spirit part. Then about twice the speed of light, uh, light is the soul part, you see. And they're resonating. The real you isn't physical. It's just like you're in this car and you're resonating, vibrating with the car. But you're so integrated with the car, you don't know you're separated. You think you're the car, but you're not. You're the driver of the car. And you step in and out of the car. Okay. I got it. Awesome. Okay. So my second question, David, is, okay, is, is and we talked about this in our pre-interview, but is Ascension a choice? And can you, and is that what's going on with all of the souls and all the spirits in the world right now? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, what's happening is we're coming to the end of a very important <clears throat> coming to a very important end point. We've been in the 26,000 year cycle. We've been through four ages, uh, the four yugas. So there's an age of gold, an age of silver, an age of brass and an age of iron. And the age of gold, which is about six and a half thousand years is like kindergarten. The age of silver, um, which is like a primary school, you see. Then the age of brass is like secondary or high school. And then the age of iron is like in university. So we're going through this learning process. We are angels here in human form, you see. We're, we're the gods in human form to go through this process of, of, of learning. And it's very much a process like producing a samurai sword where we're hammered and heated, hammered and heated. We're, the, the process is suffering, the process is difficulty, challenge and adversity. That's what we're here for, to go through incredible challenges, to increase the quality of our soul but eventually there's a harvest there's an end time and we're coming to the end time of the of the kali yuga the age of iron you see and this is the time when we basically time to leave this physical plane and move on but the exciting thing is we don't leave our bodies behind we're going to go with our bodies and this is the most in incredible thing because these bodies are actually very, very precious. It's like, you know, in the Bible, it says we're made in the image and likeness of God or the gods. It, so it, it, you know, the whole idea of the ascension process is you, you accelerate the speed of the energy in every subatomic particle of the body to the twice the speed of light so we get to the soul level and then 16 times the speed of light to get to the fifth dimensional spirit level. Mm. So this explains this to me and everyone out there, subatomic particles, David, correct me if I'm wrong, that we're talking about the protons, the electrons, the neutrons. You got it. You got it, Candice. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> putting, my, my 11 year, <laughs> putting my nursing career, my past nursing career to the test here. Um, yeah. So this is why, David, and what I'm hearing you say is this is why when a physical body and a spiritual body together go through an ascension process, there's so many shifts and changes to the actual That's human right. body, the actual human form, from, from not only the outside, 
but also from the inside. Because I know for me, my, my hair looks different than it did a couple years mm. ago. My, my The food I want to eat, which is not a lot right now, is different than what it was a year ago, a couple mm. weeks ago even. Mm. Yes, that's right. So the thing is that it's, it's, it's the physical body is integrated. It's, and, and as the resonance process, as the ascension process gets underway, the, it's, you hear this in, talk about increased frequency of vibration. It's a very good metaphor. It's just a metaphor. It, you're not changing the frequency. You're changing the intrinsic speed of the energy. You you're see? But as we're beginning to speed up. And this is why it's a quickening. You hear the ancients had it right. They talked about quickening, you see. So it's a speeding up, a quickening. They talk about, you know, the acceleration, you know, into, into higher realities. So this is what's happening is that we are, we're going through this quickening, quickening process as we move toward this end point. But it is a matter of choice, you see. Because yes. we're free will beings and we have to actually choose our own reality. We create our own reality. So the three things that are vital for the ascension process. Number one, we must be practicing unconditional love. That is, we must be more into service to others than into service to ourselves. More selfless than selfish if you see what I mean. And the whole yes. of the material plane is a great temptation. There's everything out there to tempt us. And suddenly it will all be taken away in the twinkling of an eye. And it's, it's a very physical process that will do this. You see, and so the first thing is, this is our last chance to be giving rather than taking, to be serving others to be really doing what we can like Candice you're totally committed to what you're doing trying to help in the uplift, upliftment of humanity to get this information out and you know it's free and this is it we you know I, I I don't charge for my work I just give and give and give because I feel we need to set the example of giving and and, and not being always worried about money the great thing is to trust that our needs are met we need to depend on the angels not on money because the angels give us everything we need you see what i mean i i think yes. i you know it's such a wonderful process it fills your heart with so much joy when you're living with the angels rather than the bank manager <laughs> <laughs> feel so much freer like audience oh so much sure. freer oh, yeah i mean so we have to learn to, de de to depend on that divine providence. So that's the first thing. The second thing we have to choose ascension. We have to want to, to ascend. Look, if you want to become a rocket scientist or a doctor or something, you can't just swan into a hospital and say, hi guys, I've decided to be a doctor today. No, you've got to go to medical school. You've got to sweat. You've got to really apply yourself to learning the anatomy and all the rest of it. So it is with any of this spiritual stuff, with the ascension, we've got to do the work. So, you know, we've really got to be keen, like an Olympic athlete, athlete. you want a gold medal at the, the Olympics, you've got to go for it. So we need to have that go for it attitude with ascension, not to be pre preoccupied about it, but to take it seriously. And the third thing is we do need to believe in the divine, in the spiritual and believe in ourselves, but we need to have faith, we need to have trust, and we need to believe you know, in the divine. You don't have to be religious, but you know, that thing that people used to talk about called God, I, I mean, I know it's out of fashion these days, but you know, there is a superior force. There is a divine reality that, you know, it's like when, when you look at the equation e equals mc squared, it tells us everything is energy and energy is nothing but activity. And therefore there's nothing there. This world we are in is a dream state. The Aborigines got it right, you see. So we're in a dream. And therefore, there must be a dreamer. The world is more like a thought than a thing. So there must be a thinker. We can't put a name to it. We don't know what it is. It's too big. It's too all-encompassing. But it's the source of life. It's the source of our own being. We are it. We are that here in human form. Every human being is what the one being in the many bodies. So if we deny the existence of this, the unnameable one, that which cannot be encompassed, we deny ourselves. So that's the thing, we've got to be 
tuned into that reality that we're bigger than this world, that there's more than, than this physical world. And Indeed. I know most people listening to this are there, you know, but these are the three criteria. Yeah, that's everything that you said to me has just, everything you said to the audience rather, and to me has just felt so freeing. You know, when mm. you said, when you said trust, it instantly, my question was, okay, how do we create more trust in our physical body? <laughs> how do we create more physical trust? And then you went right into accepting that there is that higher source, accepting that there is that higher yeah. power. That to me means so much. I, I can trust in that. We can trust in that because it's not, it's not just me. It's not up to me. It is the higher source. Yeah. What I'm getting through so strongly yeah. now is people make it all very complicated. You know, they make it ascension so difficult, but actually there's one word that sums up the ascension, love. It's all about love. I mean, so long as we're living out of love, I mean, that's that's it. You know, we're going to ascend. We can't do anything else because we're resonating. It's a resonance process. We have to be tuned into it. And the tuning in is is in the heart, not the head. It's not thinking about it. It's just living it and being it. OK, mm -hmm. so David, I have a question for you. And this is an interesting question. Where where does love come from, David? Where does love? Where does love come from? Well, love is basically the nature of the all-encompassing source of it all. It's, it's like this, that source brings everything into being through love, through that real focused, you know, <laughs> love is, 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 you can feel it, it's an outpouring, isn't it? So out of the source outpours the universe. And it's this outpouring of giving. The whole universe is a gift from the source. And there's this tremendous, like, maternal. You know, we all talk about God or the source as, as God masculine. No, it's the mother. <laughs> I mean, nothing else could create a universe except a mother. It's like a womb. It's, it, it, it's this outpouring of that motherly tenderness, that love, that nurturance. That, 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 that's the love we're talking about. Oh, you like bring tears to my eyes. <laughs> I get like, I can just feel this, this bursting from, from my whole chest. It's, it's, um, it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I know you guys were definitely touched by that. Um, and I don't even know why I'm getting choked up about it. I feel so connected to what you said. Um, David, so what something that we spoke about um, before this interview is um, whew, get my get my thoughts about me for a second. <sighs> something that we spoke about before this interview was the purpose of ascension, the purpose of why we are going through this process for Earth. Can you yeah, go yeah. into that, David? Yes, I'll talk about that. Before we just talk about the purpose, there is something I must, must say, and that is we are invited to ascend by source, by the divine, and the invitation comes in the form of a door of light. That's why I've got this little book out, The Door of Light, which is my gift. It's, it's so important that if there's one thing we need to know about, and that is that a door of light will appear before us when the time for ascension comes. And the only thing that matters is that we are, the light in our hearts will lead us into the light of, of, of the door to eternity. This is the door to eternity. And basically all we have to do is just step into the light. And the key is not to think about it. As soon as we start thinking about it, it will fade away. So we have to be conscious that the way is not through the mind. The way is not through thinking. We don't think our way into ascension. We just, uh, you know, we just flow into the ascension. It just, it just, it's that, you know, so we, it's that longing for love, that longing for light that, 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 that transports us into the light. So what is the purpose of this? The purpose <laughs> is that this is our becoming. The universe needs management. 
And, you know, it's like an upgrading of spirit. That's what this planet's all about. We're, this is a platform. I call it the Academy of Angels. We are the gods here in human form, here to overcome through battle, pain, and storm. That tenacious hold on to power, greed, and pride that prevents us as gods from evolving on high. We're the angels. And the exciting thing, Candice, is this. The reason why the angels there, there are angels and archangels that are deeply disturbed by, by, by humanity. You know, the gods that made us had a great fear that man would someday outshine them down here. So they denied us the tree of life and threw us all out into pain, death and strife. The thing is this, that the human being is the pathway to the seraphim. You see, there are seven levels of angels, and the angels and archangels we all talk about are at the bottom of the pile. You know, the cherubim and the dominions and the principalities, but the seraphim are the highest level of angel. So you see, what happened is that Michael the archangel seeded a line of incarnations, which led to Yeshua, or Jesus. And Jesus went through the ascension. And when Jesus appeared to uh, St. Francis of Assisi, he appeared as a seraphic angel, as a seraph. And this is where you hear about, you know, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. The seraphim are the closest to source. So what it is, is that the seraphim, if you like, is the highest level of management. So we are angels that have come here to evolve in our, in, in, this is the angelic, the process of angelic evolution. And unfortunately, the only way is through challenge and difficulty. This is why our journey of, us, of many lifetimes has been so difficult. But you know, when you, when you go through the process of death, you just then reincarnate into another body, into another life, and you roll on through this reincarnational process but this is the end of that process for us we're a batch of angels we've completed that process and now through the ascension we are going to lift up with our bodies with our souls as complete beings and move into the fifth dimension for our next assignment you see and it's so exciting because as um as uh, Edgar Casey said, you know, after the ascension, we go to Arcturus. The, you know, this is the, so exciting. People may have heard of Ashtar, which means Ash Star, because the, the Hebrew name for Arcturus is Ash, you see. And the Arcturians are responsible for the actual ascension process, for the, 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 the physics of it. And we go to that, to the, uh, uh, and we go out from there, out into the universe on our, on our assignments. Some human beings on this planet are destined to be the black hole formations, the spirits at the black hole centers of galaxy, to be, if you like, the god of a galaxy, the, 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 the controlling spirit of a galaxy, and to be able to sort out the problems of hundreds of billions. In that position, you're, you're responsible for hundreds of billions of star systems trillions of, of planets and all their life forms and you've got to now know how to sort out the difficulties and that's why we're here it's not we're being punished it's just we're we, 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 we're learning how to deal with challenging situations and we're being inoculated against fear that's why we're going through so much fear and terror, you know, burnt at the stake and, you know, all these different experiences we've been, we've been having, tortured and, you know, that uh, terrible experiences. But that's how we've learned to arise above fear, rise above terror, come into that power, that total confidence. It's, you, you, you see, um, we need these experiences. And the ascension, that's the completion of the whole process. Mm, David, I, wow, everyone that's watching this right now, if you've ever had any questions, go back and rewatch everything that David just said, just go back and rewatch it and rewatch it and find faith and find trust in what he's saying. David, I'm so curious where, and let me, let me uh, create, let me create a sentence here. Where where did all of your, where do you feel you received all of your knowledge from? And, and what, 
And on top of that also, David, what was the moment that you chose to accept this information? Uh, well, it's been with me all of my lifetime. I've been told that I'm an incarnation of Hermes. So I come in with the part of my birthright is the vision of Pamandras, which was, you know, the uh, Thoth Hermetic um, incarnations. You know, in the Emerald tra Tablets, um, you know, Hermes says that while my soul rests in the halls of Amenti, um, my spirit roams the earth, incarnating from time to time for the upliftment of humanity. So I'm just one of those incarnations of that spirit, you see. So again, that fits with the, the physics at the hyperphysical, the soul level is, is the halls of Amenti. And then the, 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 it's the spirit that reincarnates and, 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 and that's, that's the process. But also when I was doing the Ascension tour in Australia, this lady came out um, of the Blue Mountains, a woman called Opal O'Neill. And she said that in 1979, Edgar Casey came to her and said that a man will come from England to Australia to complete a triangle between England, Australia and America through which the last word from God to mankind was spread throughout the world. She wasn't told who he was, but then when I arrived in Australia um, in 1991, um, in, in, in November 91, uh, Edgar Casey came through to her and said he has come and gave her my name. So I've just got this role of, of being the messenger, do you see? And my, the way I bring the message through is through physics, because I think we're in a scientific age and we need the physics. And that's why I've got this book, uh, Awaken, because um, the, the Awaken's got the full physics in it. We need to understand that this door of light is the end of a, a super energy resonance beam. And the speed of the energy in the doorway of light is the speed of fifth dimensional energy. And as, as we step into that light, a resonance occurs so that this is, is, as we step into the fifth dimensional light, it's fifth dimensional energy, the speed of energy in every subatomic whirlpool of light that makes us up accelerates to that higher speed. And we just find ourselves um, moving up a tunnel and then there's a, 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 a lesser light, another entrance, and we step out into the fifth dimensional world. So it's understanding the physics, that's what makes it so, you know, realistic. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much. And David, I would love, love, love to hear your song. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, this is the, the song of Ascension. The, the, it's all tied up in, in six minutes of song. Where we've come from, where we're going, what it's all about. Times have changed for the earth. Time to let go of the things that we hold dear. Releasing is the process that people most fear. But let go we must, for the times of change are here. If we let go of our things, without fear. Surrendering hold on to those that we hold dear, then they will return to make it quite clear that we can trust life, we have nothing to fear. The gods that made us had a great fear That man would someday outshine them down here So they denied us the tree of life And threw us all out in death and strife for this great sin down the gods were drawn 
into tiny babies the gods were born. The sun to earth the gods were thrust to learn that in life even they must place their trust. We are the gods here in uniform, here to overcome through battle, pain, and storm. That tenacious hold on to power, greed, and pride that prevents us as gods from involving. Now this great learning has always been done. For many on earth the battle is won. With no more pride and nothing left to keep. We are now ready. Gone is our faith in the Bible and the fear. Gone is our longing for comfort and good cheer. Gone is our trust in what we see and hear. Gone is our hold on our loved ones. So dear. We are the ones with neither friend nor foe, ready to surrender everything we know. We are the ones standing on our own. Solitary eagles about to soar. The solitary eagles are 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 about to soar. Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much. I was, um, I'll share something. I, I was, I was raised Catholic and the music and the, the, the experience of, of, of a of Catholic church when they're singing in a different language, there's a, there's this resonance to it that I feel. And I felt that with your music. I felt that with your song, this, this, this resonance is the best way I can explain it. it. Felt calming and it felt peaceful and it felt opening and it felt um, vulnerable. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -mm. Yes, I was brought up as Catholic as well, and you know, I, you know, I have that, you know, there are issues with the Catholic Church, but I'm so grateful for that. You know, for that that grounding in, in, in faith, that grounding in love for the Divine Mother, for Mary and, and, and Yeshua, her son. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it does give that heart warmth, that connection. And, you know, we just need to be very grateful for our roots, but not to attach to them. 
Yes. Yes. I loved what you said. And um, I loved what you said in your music and your song. It, it what, what I experienced was exactly that detachment, detachment from still loving and giving of myself to my loved ones and, and the earthly things, and then also having detachment from it. Mm, mm, absolutely. 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 And, you know, with James Twyman and his, it's a lovely story. He, he, he writes about the door of light and, uh, you know, and his relationship with Mary. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 she's one of us, you know, and she's, she's so important at this time that we, we maintain our connection with, with, with Mary, with the Divine Mother, with the Kuan Yin. It, you know, it, 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 this openness to all the great religions, to all, all, all the ways that lead, lead to the Divine. Um, I, I just feel it's really important at, at this time. I agree. David, what are some things that we can do to, so you mentioned in the beginning of our interview that you also were a nutritionist. Yeah. What are some, what are ways that we can prepare our bodies and keep our bodies prepared for this process as we go through this process, as anyone goes through this process? How can we keep our bodies stable, prepared, ready? Well, according to Rudolf Steiner, one of the mo most important things is mineral nutrition. And um, that's why I've got this um, product, which I, I haven't brought it with me to show on, but it, it's on my website, uh, Vital Soul Wonder Food. I, I've got the uh, magnesium rich ionic salts from the Salt Lakes of Utah. and. I've, I've got them in that product. So we've got 72 trace elements. You know, the body needs access to all the atoms of, 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 of the world. We need magnesium and calcium, so important. So I, I you know, uh, a lot of the supplements we get are just magnesium oxide. No, we need the magnesium citrate, the magnesium gluconate, these, these bioavailable forms of magnesium. We need the vitamins. We need the vitamin D. You know, vitamin D could reduce the, the death rate through COVID by 50%. This is Northwestern University showed that it's a vitamin D deficiency that's mm. the problem. The, body's, the body can't deal with the cytokine storm when it comes into contact with COVID and the vitamin D calms that down. So <clears throat> these vitamins and vitamin C, we especially need at this time. Uh, we've really got to look after these bodies so that get the right antioxidants and everything into balance. So. I did a degree in nutrition. I've, I've worked with an amazing, an American company called USANA Health Sciences, one of the best in the world. I've learned so much in nutrition through this journey and the importance of nutrition for the ascension process because we're taking our bodies with us. So those bodies need to be healthy. They need to be resonant. And our, that this whole thing of resonance, that it's a cellular process and the cells resonate best with the spiritual dimensions when they have the correct balance of mineral nutrients in them yes it almost sounds like we're missing earth in our bodies yeah we've got to ground our bodies by getting the earth into our bodies so right <laughs> candy yeah <laughs> i didn't need more mother earth inside of me so that i can be of service to her yeah yeah bless her the, the divine mother earth we need to love the earth and eat the earth yeah yeah. Yeah. What are some other ways outside of nutrition that we can prepare our bodies for this process? Well, we can continue to prepare. Well, you know, the meditation and relaxation exercise is so important, but the, the important thing is meditating on the breath, you see. And there's one little thing I, I learned, and that is that if you're getting plagued by your thoughts, listen to your thoughts, give them the, your undivided attention and they scatter. <laughs> they like to be in the background, just sort of you know, distracting us, being a nuisance, like a mosquito. But as soon as we put our, uh, listen to our thoughts really attentively, they're gone. And it's just a blank space. Well, that, so that's a way to meditate is to just, is to really focus on the breath, go with the breath. And, you know, cause you know, with the ascension process, the key is to be in, into our breath is to breathe our way into the ascension. So practicing breath meditation is really important. Breath meditation. Do you have a specific breath meditation that you love? Uh, not so much. I don't breathe in any special way. I just, I just allow my focus to go into the breath and I feel into the breath. I just allow myself to 
be conscious of my breathing. And it's as you give attention, it takes, takes your attention into the heart chakra and you feel that divine energy, uh, you know, and I, I just listen, I just listen to the sound, you know, listening to the thoughts. So listening to what's going on inside my head and closing my eyes and just seeing the light, you know, it comes, you have, it takes a while, but you suddenly see the light, you know, and just allowing the, the taste of the energy as well to be conscious of, of all the, just going inside, you know, the sound, the light, the taste, the feeling of the breath, just being conscious of what's going on inside the body and without any special technique, just being aware of what's happening. Mm -hmm. If you feel any itches, you know, just to be aware of it, just, just to be detached and just focusing on, 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 on the beautiful body we've been given. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I'm on board for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I actually, my, my boyfriend has been studying breath right now. He's uh, been studying with, um, gosh, I don't, I don't recall his name, but a, uh, he's an expert on breathing and what breath has done for our physical bodies and how breathing can actually alter your physical body when you breathe a certain way. So it's mm. the way breath resonates inside of our body for me has been so fascinating over these past few months. So thank you for sharing that. Yes, you're welcome. That's lovely to hear, Candice. Yeah, yeah. So, David, we get to we get to wrap up now. Is there anything that is on your mind that you feel the audience is asking for that you feel called to share? Well, yes. I mean, it's just the service, you know, the the meditation, the communication of the the, the, the satsang, you know, the the keeping in the company of truth, you know, the communication of truth, like you're sharing through this series and, um, the, and, 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 and the service, that, that's the threefold way is, is, to, is to meditate on the truth, is to share the truth, is to serve the truth. So the more we can do to look after others, you know, just to, if we, if we I, t I tell you what's gonna come very soon. The thing that's gonna trigger the ascension is a coronal mass ejection. There's gonna be a solar storm that will, do severe damage to the electrical installations, could knock out the internet. It's, you know, the scientists are predicting it's not a matter of, of if, it's a matter of when. And the thing is that suddenly, you know, all, if the internet goes, money goes, because all our money transactions are electronic transactions via, you know, our smartphones and contactless and all the rest of it. And if all that lot goes, and it goes in a minute, the twinkling of an eye, when the solar storm comes, there's no money. There's all the things we put value to in our, and this world will be gone. And the, the thing is that we, that's why where we, we need to detach. And so as we give to people in need, we're, 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 we're learning to detach ourselves. And uh, what I do, I've got a wonderful little trick. I worry about other people's financial needs and that prevents me from worrying about my own. When I'm giving money away, there's no sense worrying about money if you keep giving it away. And that stops the anxiety around money, you see? And then you just learn to trust. So it's, it's all the great spiritual teachers have told us that is to just give. And it's very interesting this because, you know, Buddha taught his, 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 his disciples, never say thank you because by receiving, by being the beggar, the Buddhist monk does more for the person that gives the rice. The, the real beneficiary isn't the Buddhist monk, but the person that's giving the rice because the monk creates the opportunity for that person to give and thereby, you know, increase their the tapas or barami in, in, in the Thai language, the spiritual value, the spiritual currency that goes with giving. When we give, we receive spiritually a hundredfold. Thank you so much, David. It has been an honor holding space for the audience right now to receive your message. And it has been an honor hearing your words. And I can't, I can't wait to have another conversation with you and <laughs> even a longer one and even longer one. David, where can everyone, so you, oh, first you spoke about your free gift in the interview, the door of light. You're giving that away as an ebook, correct? That's correct. Yes. That's, that's my gift. I, everyone needs to read the door of light. Yes. Okay, and we have links for that. And then where can everyone find you out there in, in the internet as long as we have it? 
Yes, well, I'm, you know, I've, I'm, I'm trying to keep up a, a good flow on my YouTube channel so people can go onto my YouTube channel and, and subscribe. I've got my internet, davidash.co. It's not .com, it's .co. And, and you know, you get, get hold of my book on Amazon. But it, the Awaken book is very important because, you know, you get an understanding of the physics um, and the, the whole ascension process is explained in uh, as a physical process within that book Awaken. So I recommend getting hold of that book. I do as well. Many of my clients, including myself, have also bought that book. So Awaken is definitely gets to go on your bookshelf immediately. Yeah. <laughs> immediately. <Thank you. laughs> David, thank you again so much for your time, for your song, for your knowledge, for your your generosity. Thank you for your openness and thank you for being the person that you are today to be a giver of this knowledge, to be a giver of this grounding, to be a giver of this love. Thank you so much. And Candice, and may I just give you from my heart the blessing of the Divine Mother. May she be with you always and hold you in her arms as she does. I, I mean, she's there with you and holding you and, and, and may you be blessed by the Divine Mother forever. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> Thank you everyone who has tuned in to this interview from for the abundance of my mind is everywhere right now. That's why I'm so emotional right now. This experience has really made me emotional. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to the Abundant Life Mastery um, Mentor Series. Thank you, David. Thank you, audience. And I will see you guys very soon. Mm -hmm. namaste namaste thank you all for listening may may the great divine be with you all and have a happy ascension meet you all in the heavens uh, in the fifth dimension we're going to have a wonderful party up there. yes we, we are get together <laughs> out of lockdown and into freedom <laughs> i love it bye everyone thank you bye 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 thank you <laughs>